Hello there, this is Darth Melvin, leader of the Knights of Melvin. Star Wars Ahsoka Episode 2 was terrible. It was even worse than the first episode. The first episode was a little slow, but this episode just really didn't have anything in it. It was bad. So we start off, Sabine got stabbed in the stomach, but she's alright. We all knew she was going to be alright. She got reva and survived. Unbelievable, given the backlash that Kenobi got, that they would do something like this. So she's like to Ahsoka, let me help, blah blah blah, and Ahsoka's like, no, I don't want you to help me. Because Ahsoka ran away from Anakin, ran away from Sabine. I don't know why she bothered to train Sabine in the first place, because it never happened in Rebels. Ahsoka goes to check out Sabine's place, and... Here's the Disney merchandising again. So this cat can't just be in the background. Ahsoka needs to stop, bend down, admire the cat, and then go into Sabine's place. Like, this is deliberate. And this happens frequently throughout the first two episodes. She sees the Ezra hologram and everything. It's like, he's only going to probably be in the last episode. This is the strong whammon show. Ahsoka kills a droid that's still alive and brings it over to Sabine. And so Sabine is just amazing. Um, fully healed from her injuries. You know, she's able to work on this. Her Imperial operation should have been dismantled after the rebellion. Anyone check on that? I'll meet you there. Let's get going. No, you need to recover. I'm fine. So we're getting some character development. Ahsoka doesn't want anything to do with Sabine. But Hera knows, no, she does want you to uh, help her out. And has to give her a little confidence boost. Just a bunch of garbage. The two Dark Jedi, or whatever you want to call them, Filoni Dark Jedi, they get Morgan Elsbeth to help them open the map. And it's not revealed exactly why they want this map. It's just that they want power. And they think by getting Thrawn that they'll have power. So, no detail when it comes to that at all. We are able to find a use for everything in many different sectors. The profits generated from a single star destroyer are enough to fund a variety of New Republic reconstruction programs, among other things. Other things like? So the two strong women know this guy's a rat, and they're questioning him. Classified. Classified. I'm a general. Nothing's classified to me. Well, then I'm authorizing it. Well, I'm not sure you can. Want a bet? This really gives me Admiral Holdo vibes. Wanna bet? Trigger happy flyboy. So 25 minutes into this episode, by now I've already just checked out. It's like I know that this is garbage, but as for just like trying to pay attention, like what's going on to all the little details, the first episode was very boring. This one is even more boring has less action going on, and I just, like, don't care. I don't know why people are saying, like, oh, th like, these episodes are so great, like, this is a great start to the show. This show is garbage. I said stop that ship, that's an order. For the Empire! <laughs> Soka doing the bad girl thing. Now we're gonna have another fight scene. Ahsoka runs into an Inquisitor. I just thought the the fight scenes in the first two episodes were not good. And I'm someone who likes lightsabers in Star Wars, but this is just bad. And it's like, who is this guy? Like, why is he working for Balin's skull? And 
And somehow Ahsoka's not dead here. You know, like, this looks a lot like The Last Jedi with Luke Skywalker, but... But that wasn't him there. He was force-projected. This... I don't know why this didn't kill her. Then this is back-to-back -back episodes where Shin is running away from Ahsoka. It's just redundant. And then again, who is this guy? Why is he working for them? Like, nothing has been answered in these first two episodes, which is fine, I guess, if there's a payoff, if we get to figure out what's going on. But does Disney Star Wars have a good track record? No, they don't. But don't worry, guys, Melvin. They floated. Dave Filoni, he's, he's, he's the showrunner, uh, he's, uh. No, Filoni is garbage, and he's definitely not going to deliver on any of this. So then Chopper and Hera plan a tracking device on the ship. Good work, Chop. You got him. And then Dave Filoni again with the plagiarism. We got him, aren't you? Good work, Chop. You got him. This guy is not original. Just always finding ways to rip off Anakin. Another scene with Sabine. The merchandising. They have to show the merchandising on screen. Then this scene is so empowering. The haircut. Sabine just cuts her hair. I just want to grow my hair out this long so I could just cut it like Sabine did and really feel the powerful female energy from doing it. Sabine finds the painting on the wall with Ezra. And again, if you're a casual, you have no idea what's going on. You don't care about these characters. Nice haircut. It's more me. <laughs> Tells her, nice haircut. <laughs> this is probably the highlight of the episode. It was so bad. Take us out. Not alone. So after all that, Sabine is now Ahsoka's Padawan again. And we still don't know if she's force sensitive. We don't know why Ahsoka decided to train her in the first place because this was off screen. We don't know why she decided to ditch her. But now after defying her orders, almost getting herself killed, getting reva she is all of a sudden qualified to be a Padawan again. So now they're going to find the ship, which has a tracking device on it. And we are a quarter of the way done with this show. And it's just been trash. And I don't understand what people see in this show. It's not going anywhere. I will be releasing a more in-depth breakdown of this episode. Make sure to become a knight, subscribe to the channel, join the Knights of Melvin Discord, help plot to take down Disney and all their shills. The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural.